So my name is Ted. I work in a company called Tinkerbox, and Ooh. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have some Tinkerboxers here tonight. Uh, so I'm here to share with you five random Ruby tips. Uh, and I guess the fear when you do this talk is, since it's random, right, what happens if you randomize the exact same tips as last time? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually not completely random. 50% of the people are repeat. <laughs> true, true, true. <laughs> uh, all right, so, so let's go. Uh, the first tip is to unary freeze and unfreeze your strings. So in Ruby 2.3, we got the frozen string literal pragma that allows you to freeze all your strings by default. Uh, and in addition to that, we also got some new unary operators for strings. Uh, so you can actually do stuff like minus your string and it will freeze your string. Or you can do plus your string and it will unfreeze it. Now obviously you can't unfreeze things in Ruby, so it will actually just return you a mutable version of the string. Uh, and also important to point out that the minus works the same way. So you can't use the minus to freeze something in place like you would use the freeze method. So they actually work slightly differently. Uh, now, if you decide to do this, just be, be careful because obviously the unary operators do somewhat different things if your variable is, say, a fixed num. So just be wary of that. Uh, OK, the second tip uh, in the same flavor is to freeze your value objects or all the things if you want to. Uh, so we have a hypothetical class here uh, named point that takes some coordinates in its constructor and uh, calling the freeze method inside the constructor. And there's obviously no magic going on here. The freeze method is defined in object. And since point is an object, you can just call it from wherever. Uh, obviously, to make your object immutable from the outside, you, you can just use the readers, right? You don't have to use the assessor. Uh, I also define a, a method called nope to demonstrate that this will actually not work. Uh, so. The nope method tries to update the x coordinate of this point. But when you try to call it, it gives you a runtime error and says that you can't modify your point because it's frozen. Uh, so this works on any object that you define yourself. Uh, the third tip is uh, implicit to proc invocation. So most people by now know that you can uh, pass a symbol to the ampersand operator when you're using an enumerator. Uh, and the way that works is by implicitly calling to proc on whatever you pass it. Uh, but this works on any object that you pass it, not only, only on symbols. So you can define to proc on anything you want. So in the example, I define to proc as a class method on our hypothetical point class. Uh, and it returns a proc. So if you are familiar with JavaScript, this is similar to a function returning uh, another function. Uh, in this case, the function return just takes some arguments and instantiates a new point with those arguments. Uh, and this proc will actually keep its scope uh, wherever it goes. So new will always refer to points new. Uh, and that could theoretically allow you to take some coordinates, raw data that might come from an API or wherever, uh, and instantiate point objects using a slightly shorter notation. So I listed three ways. The first way is probably the, the way that most people are familiar with and use. Uh, the second way uses the method method to get the method new from point. Uh, <laughs> And that will also work because method Im implements uh, to proc. Uh, and the last one is our example where we actually define to proc ourselves. Uh, so it's slightly shorter, but if you want to do some convention like this, it's important to remember that most people will probably not know what's going on. And if you don't know that 
if you don't know that two proc is called implicitly, then uh, it gets even hairier. But it, it is possible. OK, first tip. Uh, the type casting methods defined in kernel. So there are seven of them. Uh, array complex float hash integer rational and string. And now you might ask what's going on here because these look like classes and they are also classes. Because it turns out in Ruby there's nothing preventing you from defining a class and a method with the same name. Uh, the only thing that will happen is you can't invoke your method without parentheses because it will return you the, the class instead. Uh, but this can be quite useful. So array, for example, if you pass nil to the array method, it will give you uh, an empty array. Uh, and hash works similarly. Uh, and you have something like integer that works differently from calling two underscore i on your object, uh, as demonstrated here. So I have two strings that are sort of numbers, but they also have some other stuff in there. Uh, so in the first example, the string is one followed by a, a letter, and two i will return one. Uh, the second one is a letter followed by a one, and two i will return zero. So it's sort of uh, inconsistent here. Uh, but if you try to call the integer method, uh, it will throw you an argument error. So for all of these methods, they will return you what you expect, or they will throw an error, which can be useful in some cases. Uh, and of course, because they are methods, you can also use the method method to use them in an enumerable. OK, fifth and last tip, and probably my favorite, is the new squiggly hair doc. So if you don't know what hair doc is, it ha has been in Ruby for quite some time, and it allows you to write long uh, multi-line strings without messing too much with the interpreter. Uh, so hair doc is one of those things when I was reading the pick act book, right, I was thinking, OK, I will probably never use this for anything, because it seems weird. Uh, but the last few weeks, I've been working a bit on RuboCop, and I've actually found a valid use case there. Uh, this is the squiggly hair doc, by the way. Uh, so they have this sort of declarative pattern matching language that they match to the AST. And since you all know what an AST is now, you can, <laughs> <laughs> you can know the, understand the merit of it. Uh, and here is an example of the dash hair doc, which existed from before. Uh, so the slightly unexpected behavior here is that uh, all these uh, indentation spaces will be included in the string. But with the new squiggly hair doc, uh, all the leading spaces will be removed in the final string. And this was also introduced in Ruby 2.3, so you won't be able to use it. Uh, but I assume you all upgrade frequently and if you don't, I think Winston wants to, to talk to you after. <laughs> and those were the five random Ruby tips. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions? No? Okay, thank All right. you.